Good morning. This morning we begin four Sundays of using the enriching our worship form of the Holy Eucharist, which is a supplement to our prayer book. So nearly the entirety of the service is printed for you uh, in your bulletin. And I just note that there are some slight differences to what you might be used to in your, the responses as well as in the Nicene Creed. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Kings. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans, on one of their raids, had taken a young captive girl from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his Lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, Go then, and I will send a long letter to the king of Israel. He went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, you know that I have sent to you my servant Naaman, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go. Wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. 
Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned away in a rage, but his servants approached him and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A reading from Galatians. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work, then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word 
must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whatever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Please stand as you're able and join me in singing hymn number 657.
If there are any children who'd like to participate in our children's sermon time, they're welcome to follow our volunteers out the side door immediately following the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off and protest against you. You Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The seventy return with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watch Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Some would argue that the decline in Christianity in our part of the world is ultimately a good thing for the church of God in this place. Because this decline has gradually stripped the church of the privilege that it has long enjoyed in our society. A privilege that has at times perhaps made the church too complacent and too comfortable and that has, therefore, moved it ever further away from the experience of the early church, from the experience of the earliest disciples of Jesus, which, as our Gospel reading this morning makes clear, was far from comfortable. Our Gospel reading this morning has sometimes been referred to as the blueprint for the beginnings of the early church, in which Jesus moves past his initial commissioning of the twelve apostles, to commission 70 others. And that number 70 in the ancient world had a universal connotation. So really what Luke was trying to say is that Jesus was sending everyone else out, everyone else who had a heart for the gospel of God, to go into every town and village that he himself intended to go and to proclaim the good news of God's kingdom. And not just to proclaim it, but to live it out, to incarnate the love of God and the peace of God all over the world. But as he does this, he warns them that the gospel is inherently countercultural, and that they would face fierce opposition in taking God's message out into the world. He warns them that he is sending them out like lambs into the midst of wolves. But as he does this, He leaves them with three important pieces of advice 
But I believe we would do well to pay attention to as we strive to be the church in our own time and place. First off, Jesus implicitly tells them that they need to work together. That the mission of God is not to be carried out by individuals, but by a community of people. He sends them out in pairs to help to support one another, to help to strengthen one another, to help to inspire one another, to bear with one another, as St. Paul puts it in his letter to the Galatians today, and to help to discern together the will of God at any given time. They need to work in a community. We all need to work in a community if we are to succeed in carrying God's message out into the world. Secondly, Jesus tells them to travel lightly, to not be encumbered by too many things, to not be weighed down by too much stuff when they go out to do God's work. And to trust, therefore, not only in the kindness and generosity of the strangers that they meet along the way, but more importantly, to trust in God, to trust that God has given them all that they need to be successful in their work. I believe uh, for us, in our own time, this invitation might be an invitation to not hold on too tightly to the trappings of the church that we have built up over many years, many years of occupying a privileged place in society, be they material trappings, like our buildings or the robes that we clergy wear during worship, or be they spiritual trappings, like a sense of entitlement, a sense that the world needs to come to us and meet us in our own terms, do things the way we've always done them, in order to become a part of the body of Christ. And then finally, Jesus tells his disciples that they need to regularly check back in with him, that they need to remain in relationship with him as they carry out their work, even when they're successful, perhaps especially when they're successful, so as not to rely too much on their own strength and to not forget God in the process. You know, it's, it's interesting to me that oftentimes we in programmatic churches can get so busy, we can start so many committees, we can start so many programs, that we run the risk of forgetting why those programs are there in the first place. We forget Jesus somewhere along the way. And what we're told today is that we can guard against that when we remain people of prayer. We remain a church of prayer. We can help to keep Jesus at the fore of all that we say and do. And when we remain a people of prayer, we then have the ability to go out into the world and incarnate God's love, truly incarnate, not just to those who accept us, but even to those who reject us as well. We'll have the power to love not just the lambs, but the wolves as well. The harvest is plentiful, Jesus says today, but the laborers are few. In other words, there is work to be done, and all of us, all the people of God, have been called. We've all been ordained by virtue of our baptism to proclaim the good news of God's kingdom out in the world. And no matter how big we are as a church, to be sure, there is work to be done in our own time and place. Two days ago, our newly elected Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, addressed the General Synod of the Church of England for the very first time. And in that address, Archbishop Welby said that we live during a time of revolution. There is great change happening all over the world. We live during a time of political, cultural, social, and economic revolutions. We Christians, we followers of Jesus who constitute God's church, should not fear these changes in society. We should not fear these revolutions, but rather engage them, so that we, in the Archbishop's words, can help to be God's answer to those revolutions. And in his remarks to the Synod, the Archbishop lifted up what Jesus tells us today in the Gospel. He says, with God's help, we can succeed. We can do God's work out in the world if we do it together, we remain in communion with one another, if we travel lightly, if we do not hold on too tightly 
to the trappings of the church, and if we remain grounded in God, and in the love of God, in Christ, in prayer. And in fact, Archbishop Welby said this, there has never been a renewal of church life in Western Christianity without a renewal of prayer in some form or another. It has been said that we can only imagine what is already in our minds as a possibility, and it is in prayer, individually and together, that God puts into our minds new possibilities of what the church can be. The harvest is plentiful. The harvest is out there waiting for us. If only we would faithfully labor in the fields of the Lord. May we have the grace and the strength to do just that, to go forth in peace from this place, to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Let us rise and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed as found in the bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people today f follow from Form 6, found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are our For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Catherine, our presiding bishop, Michael, Chip, and Anne, the bishops of our diocese, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we remember today the diocese of on the Niger in Nigeria. In our own diocese, we remember the Church of the Nativity, Raleigh, St. Ambrose, Raleigh, and St. Augustine's University Chapel, Raleigh, 
And in our own parish, we pray the five long-term goals that make up our parish's Galilean initiative. We remember today all people involved in conflict and war, especially Mark McLaughlin and Chris Strawn, and all others who have requested our prayers. For Frank Harris, Rachel Hunter, Pat Boyd, Buster Brown, Carl and Rebecca Coley, Sam Jones Moore, Sean Toom, Tyson Swain, Jackie Connor, Tom Shaw, Mildred Nowell, John Tola, Ann Ingram, Monica Adams, Florence Greenberg, Alan Champion, Jim Carr, Jean O'Connor, Jackie O'Donnell, Rod Reinecke, Lauren Crow, Mary Dew, Karen Brown, Walt Morse, Pat Yarborough, Richard Perkins, Steve, the Leaf Ministry at Elon University as it searches for a new campus minister, all those injured in the plane crash yesterday in San Francisco, all residents of rehabilitation and assisted living facilities and their caregivers, and anyone else you wish to name, either silently or aloud. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy and strength. We also thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, and especially today, for all those in every generation who have helped to earn or protect our country's freedom, and for anything else you wish to name, either silently or aloud. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And we pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, remembering especially today those who died in the plane crash yesterday in San Francisco, for Justin Rogers, who died this past week in service to our country, and for anyone else you wish to name, either silently or aloud. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. And now, kneeling as you are able, we pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done in our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Now, Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand at this time. Now the peace of Christ be always with you. Peace, Lori. I have you back. Peace, Greg. Well, good morning again, and welcome as always to any visitors or newcomers today. Uh, all are welcome immediately following the service to enjoy refreshments out on the front lawn. As indicated in our bulletin, our assistant rector, Marissa, is away on vacation today, uh, and I'll be away uh, the next two Sundays uh, on vacation. 
Please note that this is the first Sunday of the month, so it is Food Basket Sunday. So if you've brought a non-perishable item to donate to Loaves and Fishes, uh, you may do so, uh, or, or allied churches, you may do so as you come up to, re- uh, to receive communion today. With that, we continue our worship with the offering of our gifts. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep 
and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Holy, 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 Lord God, of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You look with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your Spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, from every tribe and language and people and nation, to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. To you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Bread and wine, the gifts of God for all of us, the people of God. This is God's table, and all are welcome here. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life, and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. 
Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Live without fear. Your Creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good, good road, and may God's blessings, the Creator, Redeemer, and life-giving Spirit be upon you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.